That massive weather system that brought heavy rains to Los Angeles now tracking across the Rockies and into the Great Plains. But first, let's take a look at the temperature extremes for today. The hot spot around the world, Mandora, Australia, a cattle station on the Indian Ocean, 111 degrees. And it doesn't look like there's very much there. You would have no idea that there would be an ocean just several miles away. The world's cold spot, Vrkoyansk, minus 59, beating out Dalyunk here, which was minus 57. Vrkoyansk has the coldest temperature ever recorded in the Northern Hemisphere outside of Greenland. They got down to minus 90 back in 1892. Nothing even remotely close to that here in the U.S., a very mild weather pattern, temperatures well above normal in the Midwest region. This is that Pacific system that affected Los Angeles just a couple days ago. Still a lot of trailing precip back behind it and another Pacific weather system moving through California, this one coming more from the Northwest instead of the deep Pacific. And let's take a look at the mid-tropospheric conditions long wave trough across the western states, a big ridge replacing the very stormy pattern offshore. You can compare that to last Friday, very different picture, strong polar jet south of California and troughing off of the west coast. So if we look at the smaller scale troughs using the heights and vorticity, we see one large system coming down the California coast Another one in the base of the long wave trough in southern Arizona, and another one lifting up the backside of that ridge through Kansas this afternoon. Going into tomorrow, this is how things evolve. By midday, that large trough in California heading towards the southwestern deserts, and then going into tomorrow night and on into Friday, you can see yet another trough moving through California. But that should be it. And we start coming under the influence of this ridging. So quite a change coming up for this weekend. Okay, let's take a look at the precipitable water. Even though it is a little bit stormy there in Southern California, the precipitable water amounts are weaker. That's due in part to this being a northwesterly flow situation. So we're looking at about 0.6 to 0.7 inch. Meanwhile, starting to get moisture and warm advection in the Great Plains, and especially in Texas. So as we go into tomorrow, you can see we're starting to increase up to about an inch around Houston and Shreveport, and it just keeps ramping up going into Friday, starting to see an inch and a half in East Texas and northern Louisiana. So we're coming into a stormy period here, almost two inch precipitable water going into Saturday, and eventually it does lift towards the northeast into Alabama and Georgia going into Monday. Then we're looking at a coastal weather system. You can see one inch amounts into the Washington DC area for Monday and Tuesday. So a lot of moisture will be involved with this next east coast system. And then a dry period going into midweek across much of the country. The water vapor imagery for this afternoon does show a vast plume coming up from the tropics, from Texas on up into the Corn Belt. Further to the west, these are a series of occluded lows across the Rocky Mountain region, but still some moisture wound up within those disturbances. Here's how it compares with the 300 millibar chart. Strong upper level winds coming out of northwest Mexico into the central U.S. and a subtropical jet flowing in from Baja, California, tapping into some of that tropical moisture. A quick look at the weather around the country on the visible imagery. Fair skies in much of the northeastern U.S., but you can make out the ridge axis right in here, dividing the broken to overcast conditions in the Midwest from the relatively clear conditions from New York down towards Virginia. Temperatures in this area in the 30s and 40s, increasing to the 50s around West Virginia. There's how it looks on the surface chart at this hour. 
calm winds from Syracuse, Albany, all the way down the Appalachians. And we start developing a southerly component once we get into the Corn Belt region. The southeastern U.S. fair skies as well, but that will allow strong radiational cooling. We do have frost advisories in southeastern Georgia. Those are valid for the area around Douglas to Jessup. Temperatures will be down to 32 degrees. In the southern plains, a vast increase in clouds as that deep southwesterly flow takes effect, and you can see even some dust around the El Paso area. Let's take a look at the traffic cameras. And there it is, dust on the eastern horizon. And all of this, this is the warm conveyor belt, but rapidly being infiltrated by drier air and downslope conditions coming in from the southwest. And of course, we also have the Pacific front moving in. This can be very difficult to find, but I believe that's going to be it passing Midland and approaching Lubbock, and to the west, some cooler conditions and very gusty westerly winds. Showers all along that front and out ahead of it, dry air because we have not had much time to replace the polar, the cold polar air with rich tropical air. We do have a little sliver of 50s dew points coming in from the Gulf, but it's not really enough to get any severe weather going. In the northern plains, well, this is a very broad area stretching from Montana to Michigan. We do have winter storm warnings in effect for north and northeastern Montana. Lewiston, Glasgow, Great Falls, that runs through Friday morning for heavy mixed precipitation and four to seven inches of snow. A large winter weather advisory surrounds that basically from Minot down to Glendive, Miles City, also down to the Black Hills, Spearfish, Gillette, and over to Bozeman, Helena, and the Bitterroots. In Minnesota and Wisconsin, though, a different story, this plume of warm air driving up the temperatures. Overnight lows this time of year, normally about 10 to 15 degrees. Instead, we're seeing 40 to 50 degrees. That's typical of late April to early May. And we can follow that warm weather northward as we go into Nebraska, Iowa, 50s all the way into Minnesota, strong southeasterly flow, and somewhere in here we pick up that warm front. Let's get reacquainted with those fronts one more time. There we go. That's the preliminary surface analysis. Cold advection, northerly winds on the high plains, and in the lower plains, that's where we have the tropical type weather going on. In the southwestern U.S., very low heights aloft. We know that from all that long wave troughing that we've observed over the Rockies and Great Basin area. So to a certain extent, a lot of this is acting like cold core convection. Steep lapse rates, lots of residual moisture, and that makes for a very stormy pattern. And I kind of wonder if some of that right there is dust near the Four Corners area, getting a little bit of brown showing up, and there are definitely some gusty winds in some of these showers. The Weather Service in Pueblo has issued a snow squall warning for the area just south of Alamosa with very vigorous convection moving into southwestern Colorado. There's no way we can go over all the advisories, but just a very quick recap in California, flood watches continue for parts of Southern California, Interstate 5 near the passes under a winter weather advisory tonight, 2 to 5 inches possible, mostly above 5,000 feet, and the Sierras also in various winter advisories. Winter storm warnings in the Mogollon Rim and northern Arizona expecting snow mostly above 6,000 feet. Alpine could get 6 to 10 inches, Flagstaff 10 to 16. In fact, let me show you the totals. So this is going to be the three-day totals from the National Digital Forecast Database. Looking for some very high amounts up in the mountains, not so much down in the lower elevations. The Four Corners area getting maybe about one to three inches around Gallup and Cayenta. Flagstaff, though, picking up 16 inches. And out there in Nevada, quite a bit of snow in the central valley areas around Tonopah out to Ely. And around Mount Charleston could see over a foot of snow. 
And there's some of the snow in California itself, Big Bear, maybe Ron Chalfant, picking up some heavy snow there. Hopefully, Ron, you're doing okay. And the Sierra Nevadas also getting some extremely heavy snow, but fortunately that's coming to a close. So let's take a look at the Q vectors. This will show you where the heavier vertical motion is occurring. Quite a bit of it in the Texas Panhandle, but just not very much moisture. A lot of the air mass has been worked over due to passing through the higher plateau regions. There's the other couplet right there in California. Upward motion passing through the central San Joaquin Valley, the coastal range, and subsidence in northwestern California. So track your favorite area. And, oh yeah, there's the very low heights and the Rockies helping to support that very convective weather regime in the Rockies and Great Basin area. So heading into tonight, vertical motion field, upward motion coming into Los Angeles and the Mojave Desert. A subsonant couplet, well, some of this could be artifacts from interaction with the, the mountains, so I'm not too sure what to make of that. That could very well be some subsonance. But this definitely is a wave train right there, trough moving through Southern California, upward motion spreading into the deserts tomorrow morning, and moving into Arizona. So the precip should be on the increase in Arizona for tomorrow morning, and rapidly moves to the northeast tomorrow night into the Four Corners area and some diminishing vertical motion into tomorrow night. And there's our final Coupe de Grasse moving through California tomorrow night. Not as much vertical motion, but well-defined trough. And gradually all this pushes into Texas and interacts with that Gulf moisture and kind of a rainy, dismal weekend for much of the southeast region with that trough lifting northeast into Monday and developing that strong coastal low I'm probably going to have to adjust this scale because we've had some very serious vertical motion over the past month or two. I'm going to have to dampen that a little bit so you can see some of the details. So sometime in the next week, I'll probably adjust this color scheme a little bit. So let's take a look at our forecast going into tonight. By midnight, the occluded front moving through Los Angeles, approaching Arizona there. Meanwhile, our Great Plains system lifts into the Omaha, Wichita region, and it's going to be one more very warm night. Minneapolis, La Crosse, Des Moines, and then going into the midday hours, a chance of thunderstorms in northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin. SPC has a marginal risk for that area for severe weather. Then we go into Friday. Our occluded system works through the southern Rockies and into west Texas. There it is, Friday morning around Sweetwater, Childress, and Fort Stockton. More warm weather in the Midwest. Temperatures coming back up as that southerly flow gets established once again. Cold air moves to the east, sweeping into the West Texas region, and we're going to have a 170-knot jet across this region. So any organized convection that gets going will be very well ventilated. I'm not seeing much severe weather risk from SPC, but it will be something to keep an eye on. Then going into the afternoon on Friday, weak occluded front moving through the Ozarks. And then going into Saturday, you can see that precip on the increase as the next trough approaches from the west. The heat moves into the northeastern U.S. You can see that triple point there in Pennsylvania. Temperatures will be approaching the 60s in parts of Pennsylvania, New York, and Connecticut. That's about 20 degrees above normal. Could see some snow breaking out with this upslope flow there around Denver, Colorado Springs. That'll be another thing to watch. And then we go into Sunday. Still rainy in Texas, but we're starting to get some northerly flow through there. Cold air spreading into the southern U.S., and a developing southeastern U.S. weather system. There it is. Moving through Alabama, some very rainy weather. Saturday, Sunday, Monday in this region could see two to three inches total from Columbia to Atlanta, Chattanooga, Huntsville, Birmingham, Starkville, Tupelo, Jackson, Memphis, all through this area here. And then Tuesday, a possible nor'easter, Monday night into Tuesday. 
There is disagreement between the European and GFS model as far as the timing. The European model a little bit fast, the GFS slower. But the rain-snow line is in rough agreement, keeping that around Boston, northern Pennsylvania, and then gradually spreading south on the backside of that low. So we'll check back in on this on Friday and see where we're at. Then we get into kind of a dry period going into next week. The Canadian polar air masses get a little bit more active, and we could see some much cooler weather later in the week as this next outbreak comes south, but looks very rainy there in the western Gulf. This is pretty far out. We'll look at this Friday and next week. And there's a look at another beautiful Texas sky, thanks to Greg, out there in the San Antonio area. This was taken yesterday. So thank you very much, Greg, for that. And I also want to thank our newest Patreon supporter, Chris. Thank you very much for that support. Okay, we'll see you back here on Friday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you have a great Wednesday night, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.